Hey, I'm Pastor G.J. Barnes, and welcome to our Word and our Worship. You know, today, have you ever dealt with setbacks in your life? Maybe you've dealt with some attacks. Maybe you dealt with even some tests. And those tests, those setbacks, those attacks got you to a place of really feeling low. I want you to know today that you are not by yourself. The reality is the Word of God is going to show us today that even Jesus had to deal with a major attack of the enemy. But what the Bible is going to show us is that every attack in our life, every setback that God allows, He allows it for a purpose. And that purpose always takes us to a better place if we trust Him. And so today, as God continues to give us a powerful word that's going to change our life, I want you to know that when we trust God and when we believe in Him, we can look back at every test, every trial, every attack, and we can declare with confidence that you can't hurt me. God's word today is going to be powerful. Make sure you sit back and get ready for an amazing word. I want you to like, share, comment, and subscribe because God's word today is going to be powerful. Stay tuned. Let's get ready. I'm Pastor G.J. Barnes, and I'm excited today for a powerful Word of God. You know, the Word of God continues to encourage us and uplift us and provide guidance, but I'm also excited, each and every one of you today who is watching, that the Word of God covers us. Amen. I want you to know that today's message is a message of covering, a message of covering you in the things that are before you in your life and even covering you in the things which are to come. And so I'm thankful, we are grateful, that God continues to give us a fresh word. Today I'm gonna to be ministering from the subject entitled, You Can't Hurt Me. Overcoming setbacks, trials, and tests. Because the truth of the matter is many of us have gone through or are going through tests trials, setbacks, or major attacks in our life. And the reality is, is as we experience these major attacks, these attacks can be overwhelming. The setbacks in our life can be and feel monumental. Have you ever dealt with something and it seems like there is no good coming out of tomorrow? Have you ever dealt with something and it seems like all is lost? Have you ever dealt with something and you were in the smack middle of a dark tunnel and when you look up, you don't see the light? People can say, oh, there's light at the end of the tunnel. People can say, oh, things are gonna get better. But if you're real with what you feel and what you're experiencing, you're in the middle of an attack a setback, a trial, a major test. Well, today, as we have understood, we're gonna learn that we are not by ourselves, that even the Son of God, Jesus Christ himself, went through a major setback, a major trial, or what the Bible calls a major test. And today, we're gonna learn that there are things in our life that are tests, that test us, that push us, that press us, but that we ought not feel like the test is a waste of pain, but that every trial and test that we experience, I want to encourage you today, and as we learn in the Word of God, God is allowing it because there is a purpose. Yes, there is a purpose even to your pain. Yes, there is a purpose even to your moments of confusion. Yes, there is a purpose even 
to the tests in your life that seem to bring nothing but anxiety, there is a purpose. And that purpose, when we trust God, we listen to him and we do what God tells us to do, that purpose will always get us to better. Hmm. It will always get us to brighter. It will always get us to a life that God is ordained for us. Today, as we dive into the scripture and we look at the word, I want us to focus and take a moment to read Luke, the gospel of Luke, chapter four. We're only going to look at verses 13 through 14. And today I want us to read from the contemporary English version of the Bible. The Gospel of Luke, chapter four, verses 13 and 14. This is what the word of God says. After the devil had finished testing Jesus in every way possible, he left him for a while. Jesus returned to Galilee with the power of the spirit. And news about him spread everywhere. The word of God for God's people. God cover us today. God bless us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Even as we understand that there are many tests or trials in our life. This scripture gives us a moment where we get to take a picture of one of Jesus's difficult moments. The Bible describes it as he being tested in the wilderness. Have you ever had a wilderness experience? A wilderness experience is when things are not flourishing. You know, we think of the Garden of Eden in the Bible as a place of fruit, abundance, happiness, joy. And in contrast to that, we think of the wilderness as a place of desert, no fruit. Many of us in life have experienced our own wilderness seasons. And we felt like the things that we were hoping for, we can't see them. You may be in a moment or a season in your life where, Pastor, I don't see the fruit. Pastor, I'm experiencing a major attack. Pastor, I'm dealing with a major test. Hmm. It may be a test in your family. It may be a test when you're dealing with a difficult diagnosis in your health. It may be a test or an attack on your job where it seems like no matter what you do, that there's so many people coming up against you. Your supervisor isn't on your side. The heads of the department or of the company seem like they're against you. Even perhaps your coworkers who you thought you could trust. God, why am I in a season of attack? It could be an attack or a wilderness in your marriage. You had a great moment of hope of bliss, of love, but it seems like every time you and your spouse are on different pages. There was a good day and you thought everything was good, but all of a sudden now it seems like everything is a clash. It could be a setback or a trial with your children. Or maybe you feel like you're in the wilderness in your finances or even your business. It's a wilderness season. Pastor, what am I to do? One of the difficult things about being in the wilderness is when you're in a wilderness, it doesn't seem like there are many options. When you're in the wilderness, it's not a lot of trees or when you're in the wilderness that we understand in the text, sometimes they use that word interchangeably with desert. It's not a lot of grass or greenery or foliage or trees. But the wilderness here in the context of the scripture is a desolate place. Seems like, Pastor, I don't have options. And it seems like that I'm here. And not only am I in a desolate place, but the text shows us that Jesus wasn't just in the wilderness. He was in the wilderness to be tempted and tested by the enemy. 
you're not only in a wilderness place, but you're in a place when it seems like you're under attack. What am I to do, Pastor? How am I to understand this? Hmm. Well, one of the things we get from this is that there are moments when God will allow you to be in an attack. First, you have to understand that God, yes, uh, is allowing it. But another thing we can get from Jesus's wilderness, his attack, his season of tests and trials is that his test and his trial came right after God affirmed Jesus as the son. In other words, it was right after Jesus's affirmation that he went through a season of examination. What does that mean? Right after God affirmed or gave you affirmation of where he was taking you, affirmation of the destiny in your life, affirmation of what is to come, affirmation of what you've prayed for. And God gave you the affirmation that he heard it and it shall happen. It was right after God affirmed it. It was right after you felt it, right after you saw it, right after God gave you the vision, right after you understood what your best days ahead are going to be. And it's after that is when the examination came. Hmm. Right after Jesus was affirmed is when he then was led into the wilderness to be tested or to be examined. I want you to realize this. You may be called. You may be in a position where God revealed the things that he has for you, but you're not complete until you're proven. Mm. God may have given you revelation. He may have affirmed you and showed you where you're going, where you're moving in your life. But watch this. You're not complete until you're proven, until you have dealt with the attack, until you have dealt with the test. There are many reasons why God will allow and even often guide you to a season of testing, a season of even dealing with an attack. The Bible reminds us here that when Jesus went to the wilderness and he was attacked by the enemy, he was tested by the enemy. The Bible says that he was led there by God. It is not a mistake that God led you to a place where you will be proven. God has led you to a place where it seems like you are attacked. God has led you to a place where you don't have an easy answer in front of you. And one of the things that we get here in this text and that God has given you truth in your life is that he led you there for a reason to show you that you are bigger than even the obstacle in front of you. Hmm. When God gave you the revelation, when God showed you and he gave you the affirmation, he showed you where you're going. He showed you your best life ahead of you. He showed you your joy and your happiness. But God also wanted you to understand, I led you here to this wilderness, to this test, to this setback, because I want to show you that you can overcome it. I want to show you that what your experience won't overtake you. God is showing you that the situation you're in will not overpower you. He's led you there to show you that although you may think that that could have the power to knock you out, God says, I want to prove something to you. I want to show you that as you trust me, as you believe in me, as you walk and do what I told you to do, that I want to prove to you that the attacks, that the setbacks, that the enemy shall not overtake you. And God wants us to know that through him, we are overcomers. Hmm. You have your assignment. You have your affirmation. You have what God has shown you. Now you're being tested. Hmm. The truth is this. There are many things that will often test us, right? We'll be tested by people. We'll be tested by circumstances will be tested by the enemy. 
We'll be tested by setbacks. We'll be tested by attacks. Many of us have known what it feels like, and we even know what it feels like right now to be tested, huh? <laughs> you may be tested right now. Pastor, I'm going through a test. This situation is testing me. I got some people right now that's trying to push all my buttons. I got some situations right now that's pushing me to new limits. I've got some things that I'm experiencing right now that I've never experienced before. I thought I dealt with some things in my life, but I'm dealing with some new type of things now. And I'm dealing with some new tests. I'm dealing with some new situations, some new circumstances that's pushing me to places that I've never been. And I didn't know that I could ever deal with or I could ever overcome. But I want to let you know right now, God is allowing you to be pressed and tested to the place where you are because God is showing you, guess what? The new levels that I'm bringing you to is also connected to new deliverance. The new levels that I'm allowing you to experience, the new test that you're going through right now, I'm also allowing you to realize that there's also new miracles, new joy. And with that, watch this. You're not only going to get new miracles, new joy, new deliverance. You're going to have new power. <laughs> Pastor, why am I experiencing these new kind of setbacks, these new kind of tests? Because God is showing you I'm growing you. I'm building you. I'm allowing you to get stronger. And so every time I'll allow a new attack, the result of that new attack is not going to make you smaller, but it's going to make you bigger. Ooh. It ain't going to make you weaker, but it's going to make you stronger in him. I need you to realize something. Every time the attack and the new thing that you're dealing with tries to discourage you, I want you to look back at the enemy. Look back at your situation and say, you can't hurt me because this is making me stronger. This is making me even more to the position of trusting God. My faith just got bigger right now. My, my, my glory just got powerful. I know right now that what I'm going through, God is making it greater. Huh? God is making me greater. What I'm going through right now, God is making me stronger. I need you to know something right now. You are being proven. Not watch this. Not only are you being proven to the enemy, you're being proven to yourself. Huh? Some of us didn't realize that as we trusted God and as God grows us, we didn't realize how strong we were in him. Mm. We, we didn't realize what we could actually do. We didn't realize what we could actually overcome. There were things in your life you thought you would never overcome. You could never overcome the attack on your job. You could never overcome the attack in your marriage. You could never overcome the attack in your finances. God, why are you allowing this attack to happen? You could never overcome this attack in your ministry. God said, I'm showing you this. I'm proving to you that yes, I led you to the wilderness. Yes, the devil is giving you his best shot, but I'm showing you that what you thought could overcome you, God says you will not be overcome by it, but I'm going to show you what you can overcome. You are the overcomer. The enemy isn't the overcomer. The circumstance isn't the overcomer. The attack isn't the overcomer. I'm allowing this to happen so that now you will see I'm bigger than it. And what you need to know, what you need to say to your circumstance, to your setback, to your issue, to your trial, to your your situation is you can't hurt me. God allowed me to be here. And if he brought me to it, he's protecting me through it. If God allowed me to come here, God is going to allow me to leave. Watch this. I'm about to come out stronger. I'm about to come out wiser. I'm about to come out better. You can't hurt me, enemy. You can't hurt me, circumstances. You can't hurt me, test. You can't hurt me, trial. You can't push me down. I should have been depressed right now. I should have gave up right now. I should have kept my head down right now. I should have left myself to the point where I was in the closet in the corner crying till I fell asleep. But guess what? You can't hurt me. I'm back with power because God is showing me what he can, he shall, and what he will do in my life. Mm. You an overcomer, huh? You got to realize you're an overcomer, huh? This is what you got to understand. Yes, you are dealing with a test, but watch this. The test is just a test. 
Hmm. It's, it's just a test. I know, I know it's scary. I know, I know it's pushed you into major anxiety. I know you are running around and understanding, God, I'm here in the wilderness. What's going on? But the test is just a test. Huh? It's, it's just a test. It, it ain't your real defeat. You, you're going to get over this. This is just a test. This isn't your end. This is really, watch this. What the scripture helps us to understand that when God allowed Jesus to come here into the wilderness, watch this. It wasn't the end. Watch this. It was the beginning. Oh, did you catch that? The test is just a test. And the test is really the beginning. It's the beginning of God moving you even into a new level. See, every time God allows us to get into this wilderness season. It is really a transition point before God moves us higher. God is allowing us to be here in this test because he's about to take us higher to something even greater. And he's helping us to understand that the enemy is throwing everything here because you're not going to allow the enemy to take you out there. The enemy is throwing every weapon that he has at your step right now because it shall not prosper until you go to the next level. Go ahead and enemy hit me now because I'm I know right now that if you can't take me out here when my marriage is there, you ain't touching me. Go ahead, enemy, and throw everything you got at me right now, because if you can't take me out here, you ain't going to take me out there. You tried to hit my health at this season, but as I overcome this and understand that God is a healer, I know that when I get there, you can't touch me. You can throw everything you got right now and my finances here. But when I walk out of this, when God takes me to the next level, you ain't touching me. You can hit me right now in this situation in my family right here, but I'm going to see how God's going to take us through it and you ain't going to touch us there. You can try to mess with me and my business here, but what God is showing us is that this is a test and I'm proving to you how strong I am when you get out of this now. You ain't being touched there. I need you to realize something that you got to look back at your circumstance Look back at the enemy and declare, you can't touch me. I'm a child of God. I'm here by God's grace. God allowed this to happen. I'm here by God's protection. I'm here under God's authority. And enemy, you can take every weapon you have, but guess what? It shall not prosper. It will form against me, but it shall not prosper. It will come up on my doorstep, but I shall not be knocked out. It'll push me in the corner, but it shall not be my end. It'll make me feel some kind away, but I shall not stay here forever. I might be anxious for a season, but guess what? God understand is that joy is coming. It may push me back for a moment, but I'm about to make a comeback. It may seem like I lost the round one, but I'm about to have a victory on the round two. It may seem like you lost the battle, but can I shout right now? God says you are about to win the war. You can't touch me, enemy. This is just a test. This is just a season. And the fact that God is allowing it right now means that God is setting me up for some glory that's about to come. I need to encourage you today. I need to encourage you right now. I need you to feel a little bit better because God is with you and you are about to come out, watch this, stronger than what you came in. What does the text say? The Bible says that when the enemy was testing Jesus in the wilderness, the Bible says that after a while the enemy had to leave. But that ain't the greatest part. The greatest part of the text says is this, that when Jesus left, he returned to Galilee with new power of the Holy Spirit. Can I just encourage you today? You're about to come out of your test with new power. You're about to come out of your test with new strength. You're about to return back to even the things of all different. God says you're about to return back to your old things in your life that you thought you couldn't return back to. God says, I'm going to return you back. But this time when you go back, you're going to have new power. You're going to have new wisdom. You're going to see things in new eyes. You're going to have new strength. You're going to be able to shift the atmosphere in new ways. You're walking back with new faith. You're walking back with new power. You're walking back with new prayers. You're walking back with new sharpness. You're walking back with new knowledge. God says, I'm taking you back with the power of the Holy Spirit. God says, why? Because you've been proven. The enemy didn't understand that every attack solidifies your anointing. The enemy didn't understand that every attack builds your faith. 
The enemy didn't understand that every attack solidifies your assignment. If the enemy would have left you alone, you would have stayed where you were. But now you have overcome the wilderness season. And now as Jesus is coming back, he's slaying demons. He's starting his ministry. He's pulling the disciples. He's building the kingdom. He's casting out demons. I need you to realize something. You are going back. God allowed it because he's got a purpose for you that's going to be better. Hmm. You got to be able to speak to every trial, every setback in your life. You can't win. Because <laughs> uh, the enemy wants you to give up. Huh? But you got to be able to look back at it and say, no, nah, devil. You can't win. <laughs> the enemy comes to kill, to steal, and destroy. But God said, no, I'm here that you're going to have life. And you're going to live it more abundantly. Are you in the wilderness? Maybe so, yes. But your wilderness isn't the end. Your trial isn't the end. Hmm? Your difficult moment and season isn't the end. This is just the beginning. Hmm. This is just getting started. Jesus went back with more power. Uh, he went back now tested. Because the enemy threw everything he had at him. And the Bible says he had to flee. Sometimes God is allowing the enemy to, to test you to exhaust the enemy. Uh, see, some of us are afraid of things and afraid of what might happen. But God said, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to allow the enemy to take every weapon in his arsenal and shoot it at you. Watch this. Because one, you're going to realize that everything that you thought could have knocked you out, now and it won't. But watch this, the enemy thrown everything it had at you. It threw everything at your health. It threw everything at your children. It threw everything at your marriage. It threw everything at your finances. It threw everything at your job. But guess what now, they ain't got nothing left. God showed you that I showed you how I kept you. Now what you got enemy, you, I, I, if you think about it as a weapon, the enemy's clip is now empty. Woo. But God allowed, y'all caught that in the spirit. God allowed the enemy to empty its clip on you, but you're still standing. Whoa. Did you catch that? You still standing. Hey, watch this. The enemy ain't got no bullets left because it shot everything at you. God says, I'm showing you that you're stronger. Now, when the enemy's got nothing, watch this. You're about to stomp and stand on the enemy's head. God says, I'll make your enemies your footstool. Now that the enemy has exhausted every attack, now it's time for you to rise. Now it's time for you to go to the next level. Now it's time for you to walk in my anointing. Now it's time for you to walk in my kingdom authority. You You've been proven. You've been tested. You've gone through the trial. You've gone through the tribulation. Now it's time to exercise the manifestation of everything I showed you. Did you not realize that when people see what God is about to do in your life, people will be mad. People may be jealous, but they didn't understand the test that you went through. If you want the glory, then you got to go through the wilderness. If you want the blessing, then you got to go through the test. If you want the situation, Situation, then you got to go through everything I went through. So that's why I don't feel bad about shouting about everything God has done in my life, because everything God has done in my life, I went through what God took me through. I went through every test and every trial. You ain't got to feel bad about when God blesses you with a new car. You ain't got to feel bad about when God blesses you with your new marriage or a marriage. God, you don't feel got to feel bad when God blesses your children. You ain't got to feel bad when God blesses as you would a new house because they did not see what you went through and they did not see the wilderness that God took you through but God said I now have you proven you are tested you are now one who understands that I put my trust in him and look what God has done hmm. 
You can't hurt me, enemy. I know you're trying. Keep on trying. But what you're going to understand when you're speaking to the enemy, speaking to your setbacks, speaking to your trials, is that enemy, you ain't fighting me, you fighting God. Huh. And it's God who is my Jehovah Jireh, my protector. Wow. Hmm. I want to encourage you today. God's got you. He's with you. Why does God have you? Why would God protect me? Why would God even care? I've, I've not been perfect, Pastor. Why would God protect me in this wilderness? I, I ought to just be consumed by the enemy. Why? Why? I've made mistakes, Pastor. I hear you, but you know what? I, I don't really deserve the blessing. I, I don't really deserve it, Pastor. I've, I've done wrong, too. This is the consequences of my mess. I've done some things wrong, Pastor. I want you to realize this. The blessing that God has for you isn't because you earned it. It's because God loves you. It's because of what's in God's heart, not what's in your past. God's love surpasses your past. Mm. Every mistake you made, every bad decision, every misstep, every wrong turn doesn't impact God's feverish pursuit of blessing you. Because his pursuit is based on his love. And your behavior can't stop God from loving you. The Bible puts it this way. Neither death nor life, nor angels or demons, nor the past or what's to come. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Not your sin. Not your bad moves not your wrong terms. God loves you. He's here. God is even covering us now. And today I want to encourage you that if you've never, if you've never accepted the love of God through his son Christ Jesus, today is the day, now is the time for you to accept him. He's loving you regardless of what you've been through, regardless of, of what you've experienced. God's love is here for you today. And so it's time for you to accept it. If you've never accepted Jesus, if you've never been saved, saved means I've allowed myself to receive God's love. And I'm, I'm saved not only am I saved from the consequences of sin, but I'm, I'm saved from living a life with no hope. I'm saved from living a life where I only believe in defeat. I'm saved from that and now I'm a believer in Jesus. If you want to do that today, doesn't matter where you've been, doesn't matter where you are, doesn't matter how you've lived your life, your past mistakes, your deeds, your sin. Today is the day where you can accept Jesus. And all you've got to do is pray this prayer after me with a sincere heart and believe. This is what I want you to say. Dear God, I'm sorry. God, I apologize. But I'm thankful. I'm grateful that you still love me. And today, I accept Jesus. I accept his love. And I believe that he rose again so that I may have life. In his name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, you are saved and we, we are so grateful. We are thankful. We celebrate you today. 
And we believe that God is with you. If you want to pray with us, we encourage you to share that you've prayed that prayer in the comments. Or you can send us an email at info at gjbarnes.com. That's I-N-F-O at gjbarnes.com. And, and we're going to pray with you. Uh, we want to connect with you and let you know that you're part of a family. You've got covering. Amen. You're not by yourself. This isn't just a video you're watching, but that we are here to cover you with and in prayer. Amen. We're excited and we thank you so much for watching with us. You know, do not forget a few announcements today. Do not forget that this week on Wednesday, we are going to be gathering together in person because God's got a major vision for us to share. We're excited for our upcoming vision and planning meeting. We're going to be talking about ministry. We're going to be talking about what we're doing. We're going to be talking about our in-person worship opportunities. And so you don't want to miss it. You want to be a part of it. We want to see you there this uh, Wednesday night, uh, September the 29th, 6.30 p.m., 1720 Belmont Avenue, uh, Windsor Mill, Maryland, 21244. We want to see you there, 6.30. We're going to be discussing our vision. We're going to be discussing our plans. We're going to be discussing all that we have as it's upcoming uh, and as we are preparing for in-person worship. And we want to hear from you. And for those not only who just want to come and hear, but those who want to come and engage and participate, God's called you to ministry. God's called you to something. We invite you to come out to that because we want to hear you. We want you to be a part of it. We want you to serve. We want you to be engaged. We want you to exercise the purpose in the gift that God has for you. I'm excited about that. Amen. So meet me on this upcoming Wednesday, September the 29th, 630 p.m., 1720 uh, Belmont Avenue, Windsor Mill, Maryland, 21244. You're going to see those outside directing you. Sweet A, we want you to come and celebrate with us, hear the vision with us, and plan with us as we gather and get ready for in-person worship. I'm excited. All of us will be there. I can't wait to see you. Make sure you understand we will be taking COVID-19 precautions. Masks are required. Uh, we will be doing that, but you know what? We're excited. We're excited to fellowship together. God's got something new in store for us that is gonna be powerful that we've never seen before. I'm excited. And so we wanna join uh, you and for you to join us, amen. Let us prepare now for our, our benediction, our prayer, our covering, amen, as we have gathered here. Let us pray as God continues to cover us, not just here, but everywhere and all over the world. We serve not a limited God, but an omnipresent God. And so let us pray. God, we thank you for your covering. We thank you for keeping us even in this moment. We thank you, God, for hearing our prayers. We thank you, God, for covering us. Now, Lord, we stand together collectively in agreement, in agreement, God, that the prayers in our hearts that we are asking you for, that you are answering in the affirmative. God, your word says when two or three are gathered in your name, you are with us. God, we are gathered in spirit all over the world right now. So God, we pray for each and every viewer, every watcher, every supporter, every person who's here gathered with us. God, you know the needs. Now, God, we ask that you would keep us, cover us. And God, henceforth now and forevermore, we continue to keep you first. Guide us. God, we love you. We thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I pray God's blessings over you. I'm Pastor G.J. Barnes. Again, we thank you. We love you. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you're watching us on YouTube. Don't forget to share it on whatever media platform you're watching us in today. And we encourage you to comment. We thank you so much. I cannot wait to see you. We miss each and every one of you that we have not been able to see. Some we have, but we thank you for all your words of encouragement. We're going to see you real soon. Of course, we pray to see you on this Wednesday night. We want to see you. We want to engage with you. We want to talk to you. We are excited to be engaged with you again. We thank you so much. God bless you. We look forward to see you next time. God bless you.